you hear the the sound change. So let's do. <gasps> Mistakes have been made. All right, I guess they stepped on two out of the three mines, and I stepped on the last one. Welcome survivor, we're here in seven days to die and I thought that hey no no I'm not gonna do this It's not gonna be a let's play don't worry about that I'm just showing this uh, doing the initial quest while I am actually talking just because otherwise it gets kind of dull and boring if I'm just standing still No, what I'm actually gonna do I'm gonna do a little bit of a mini series I guess about how to start as a beginner at just getting into the game and building your base. Now I've done a beginner's guide before where I have how to do your quest, how to clear your PI, what to think about, etc. So I'm not gonna go into depth on those ones. I'm gonna focus on how do you actually prepare for the first Blood Moon Horde, which will be coming on day seven if you're using the standard default settings. And that's what I'm doing here in this playthrough. Now there are a lot of different uh, strategies you can take. And one of the most efficient is actually one of the most boring one, which is basically find a POI a gas station usually looks pretty good make sure you take out the ladder uh, frame up on the uh, on the on the roof of it and just well that's it you, you're gonna survive day 7 day 14 probably day 21 etc but that's kind of boring though so I'm gonna focus on how do you start building your own base and what are some of the simple designs that you can do for day 7 that you can then sort of evolve as time goes by into a base that is good relatively straightforward to make but also effective against the zombies and of course uh, some fun in there as well making a super effective base that is really boring it might be good in some cases but that's not really what i like to do i like to do bases that are that allows me to have my home, allows me to have somewhere I put down my bedroll and all my things so I don't lose everything, but also something that is fun to fight for and fight from and not simply being something that uses this specific game mechanic in order to survive. There'll be a little bit of that as well, but I want to show you some different alternatives you have to sort of start slow, start small, and then sort of build it up to something that can stand against a much larger zombie horde at a higher game set at, well, la later game days. So as you see here, I've gone through the basic quest there. I go through how to, you know, I pick everything up and I do my basic crafting and then I run to the trader. And then I, one thing important, make sure you, Go and loot the whole trader. Go around the whole place to get all you all you can because it can really help you just kickstart your 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 journey into the seven days that I work. Got it all. And if you're lucky like I did here, somewhat lucky, I have a forge, which means I don't have to make my own forge just as long as I use this one. Unfortunately, the workbench that is, I believe, here as well, well, the, the chemistry station is not working, bit of a pity. Would have been really nice if the workbench was working, but again, that's all random. But look at what I've gotten. So now it's around 10 a.m., and this is all the stuff that I found on the way. And uh, Shotgun Messiah, good, good, I'll, I'll, I'll get that one. A bunch of things that you can actually use. Not that necessarily you would actually be uh, carrying all this around. So I'm gonna put some of this away. Just in the trader is really good because it's really safe. And uh, then I'm gonna go out and start doing some, well, some building and crafting and uh, getting into that. But the first thing I wanna look at, now when you've done this initial quest, you have four points. What do you actually do with it? So two very, very important ones I, I think that you should look at is one mother load. It means that you can buy this one straight off. It will mean that you get 20% more harvest and that's really useful. Second one I would also suggest is actually look at the Miner 6 Niner because it allows you to craft better tools, which again, just helps you. And beyond that, we're gonna go sexual to Tyrannosaurus uh, because it gives you less melee and tool stamina draw and that can be really helpful when you're trying to mine or you're trying to dig, which we will be doing. And I will be going into fast metabolism. Again, these are all perk level one. You don't need to perk into uh, the, the fortitude or agility or perception, etc. They're just straight up available. And this one is good because it allows you to heal a little bit faster, which can be super helpful when you are fighting. Other good ones are actually cardio, good. You get more stamina regeneration when you're sprinting, so that can also be useful. Pain tolerance, possibly as well. And of course, some fighting skills. But no, we're gonna start with this. So because we're starting fresh here, I can drop off a bunch of things here, and I'm actually gonna wear my nerdy glasses because those are pretty good for experience and everything. And they do give you uh, an extra intellect, which actually can be fairly useful. 
And a question of where do you start building your base? Well, that's really, really individually. What I like to do is I go to the trader and I like to build somewhere nearby that is still fairly flat. So I'm going to choose this location um, because if you look even on the map, right, it's a nice big flat area. There is some nice, uh, nice hills here, which we actually can make use of later on. And there's water, which is good because it's close to getting water. And so, yeah, this is pretty good. And th the main thing is that you want to make sure you check your time as well. Make sure you do enough hunting, get enough food, do your quests and everything. I do have a... Uh, a bird supplies over there now remember you do have seven days to do this so i, I don't advocate that you start immediately gathering a, a resource and everything you probably should be doing your a little bit of adventuring stuff like that but once you start doing your uh, gathering make sure you basically try to get as much rock as you can get wood and get soil and soil you basically get from well you just go and start digging somewhere and we're going to do that in the hill itself because that way we don't have any ugly holes that are just in the way. And soil is actually fairly easy to get. Just here with a stone shovel, you see I got 26 of it. And what do you need for to use those for? Well, actually, you combine the stone with the soil into a trick here. You click on the small stone, do recipe, and you do the cobblestone rock. So we're going to do, let me do 20 of those to start out with. And then just keep on make sure don't waste too much time just standing around if you can while you're crafting something you know do some shoveling hit some rocks or something just to make sure that you are gathering resources and please make sure you're looking around take a just a just a little bit of eye and eyeball around your where you are because i know there's one zombie over there there could be a zombie coming over the hill, for instance, and you want to make sure you don't get jumped when you're out here just mining or digging or just getting resources in general. And now we have all these cobblestone rocks. And what do we use those for? Well, so to craft one of this, and you know, let's go back to that cobblestone rock. It basically takes one each. One clay soil and one stone creates one cobblestone rock. These ones then get crafted into cobblestone or flagstone blocks. So let's do one of this. And it takes four. So you can imagine you need four soil and four rocks to craft one of this one. So we're going to put this one. Let's do it here. Not too close, not too far away. And the nice thing about this one is that it's fairly sturdy. This one has 500 hit points. If I do a normal frame, and this is something that I would generally recommend. Try to not build with a lot of wood because the frame itself has only 50 hit points. As you are upgrading it, you get a little bit more, 225, but that's definitely less than the the flagstone blocks. So flagstone blocks are really, really useful. This one, the nice thing is though, if you have a lot of these ones, you can actually upgrade them to once more. And now they have another 225. And then you do another upgrade and you turn them into 1500. And this is basically a cobblestone block or cobblestone. Uh, I, guess, I guess it's called cobblestone block. And the nice thing is that you can upgrade your flagstone block to a cobblestone block as well. If you have enough of these ones. So we go one, two, three, four. Now we have 10 upgrade and the upgrade itself takes 10. And you can actually upgrade these ones even further. So the flagstone had 500, these ones have 1500. When it comes to day seven, 500 is generally barely enough. So you wanna have some that goes all the way up to 1500. So you can imagine to get to this one, you need basically four cobblestone plus 10. So 14 and that is 14 soil and 14 stone. So you better make sure you get to shoveling and to get some stone. It is still always a good idea to make sure you have a lot of wood because it's general idea to make sure that you gather a lot of wood anyway because even if you don't necessarily want to build low bearing or defensive walls out of wood because they get taken down fairly simple you also want to make sure that you have wood at higher incline well, higher elevations and when i mean higher elevations i don't necessarily mean that you have to be up on a mountain what i mean is that normally zombies will hit the first two maybe three high on the walls and here we have another zombie that is coming in. Let's take care of him. So they will hit this one. They'll be hitting this one. 
and possibly this one as well. So what you need to do is make sure that the bottom two, possibly three, are stronger than anything that is above. Once you get up on the fourth one, especially sometimes the third one, depending on your design, you can do just fine using wood. So you don't want to waste your cobblestone rocks into flagstone blocks and cobblestone uh, walls, uh, blocks very high. The first two and three is more than enough and then just do wood over that, at least in the beginning. As you go around an adventure, there's a few things you want to keep in mind. If you see these uh, small little bags, remember these are basically the cement itself. So make sure you have a shovel and grab it because that's going to really help you later on. We're not going to necessarily use it now because we need a, a, a concrete mixer, but you want to take all you can. And these ones are also really good. These are basically rock uh, rocks or whatever, bricks or something, but they give quite a lot of rocks. So just that one gave me 60 and I haven't even really specced into anything if i didn't have the the let's see the mother load i would have gotten 50 but you saw i got an extra 20 percent so it gave me 60. these ones can be help if you want uh, polymers which are basically plastic we don't really care about that very much uh, if you find chairs pick them up loot everything you can because you will always find something that can be useful the back chair you can always just scrap you'll get some iron which is also helpful and we have arrived on day seven. And I actually don't need a lot of time to build this as I'm going to show. So make sure you make sure you build it in the morning or, you know, as you head towards lunch and spend the other time just leveling up, exploring and just gathering resources. So we're going to start here with about 85 blocks, give or take. I mean, it depends a little bit on the size. So we're going to do this one, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to go one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to sort of just uh, square enough. I'm going to use these. Uh, oh, okay. That doesn't really matter. And uh, we're going to use the, these uh, flagstone blocks as well that we crafted. Now, you don't necessarily have to make the corners. They help later on. But if you want to save a little bit, then just skip them for now. They Later on, they're good because they help to just keep everything going so that it doesn't break later on. Now, I'm going to have to use a little bit extra just to get this one up as well. Because you don't want to leave them so that the zombies can step on them and jump up because they'll be bashing higher up. So, let's do something like this. And we're going to start off with doing it, uh, let's say, three high probably. And again, we are just using flagstone blocks now. And we are, we are assuming that at day seven that you will be around level seven because the fun pimps are estimating that you're getting probably about one level per day initially again this depends on your play style as well so if you're better and you're more aggressive then you might actually get more if you do a lot of mining and building you actually get more experience as well so roughly around there make sure you have enough of the flagstone blocks and give yourself a little bit of time so you can make more if you really need to as you're doing all of this, also make sure that you have wood and craft spikes. You probably need around 80, you know, 50 to 100, 150, depending on how much time you have, are really good to have because we will be placing them around this whole place as well. So now we have something like this. And we're going to start with just upgrading some of these ones to cobblestone blocks because they have a lot more hit points these are just give a little bit of stability to the whole thing because some of these blocks will be taken out uh, it's unlikely that enough of these uh, cobblestone blocks will be taken out in order to make anything collapse but if you just have flagstone you don't necessarily know depends on how the zombies are how they are attacking how many of them get killed by the spikes and how effective you are at fighting the blood moon horde so we're going to just go around and just upgrade a little bit around here as you can see, just to make sure that we have enough, let's just see something like that and just go all the way up to the top as well so that we have that stability layer as well, ready for, well, just keeping everything up and we're going to go around the, all the sides. Now we have done that, we're going to just put on the fourth layer because I do have some extra of uh, these uh, blocks as well. Unfortunately, I fell down there and that's why you need I have a little bit of frames and everything can be helpful at getting back on top. We're going to do something like that. And then we have our fourth layer ready. And now that I look at it, this side is actually annoying me. So I'm going to take it out because it's not symmetrical. How annoying. Uh, this is pretty much that. I've run out of uh, cobblestone rocks here, which is fine. So now we're going to uh, look for a way up. So uh, 
fairly standard way of doing it is basically putting a ladder basically two up because zombies can generally not jump up but you can as a player now if the zombies are standing on top of each other they actually can access it and this is why you also want to make sure, sure you have a hatch you can either use uh let's see if i get it correctly yeah that's fine Either use a, an iron hatch or just a wooden hatch is fine. That allows you basically to get in and out fairly simple. And you close it and then zombies can't get in. Now here inside now, we're actually not going to be down here. We're going to avoid being down here as much as we can. And what we're going to do, we're basically going to try to just frame up the inside here. Not just with normal wooden blocks, but let's say we're going to do this like here and the way to do is basically just upgrade normally just one is good enough you don't necessarily have to upgrade this one twice don't waste the wood because you will need a little bit here and there later on as well so just do a basic upgrade to one usual up from the frame itself so you just have a wooden floor what you then want to do is you want to go to your frame you're going to hold r and select shape because what we want to find is the arrow slit like that and why do we do any use that one we're going to rotate a little bit hold r again get advanced and we get up to something like this and this one is simply because if the zombies actually break through down here you want to have some way that you can actually shoot them below so we're gonna uh, let's say rotate them again as well do that so now regardless of how the zombies actually get in here we can have a pretty good angle of just shooting them because you want to make sure that they are not in a, in a location where you can't even access them and let me see i'm out of that let's get four more and do that and we're gonna oh sorry let's do hold r again shape we're gonna go back to the just a basic one like this and fill that out so that we have our floor now and you might think that hey but you have no walls and that is true there is some downsides to not having walls obviously generally if you have no vol uh, walls zombie vultures can come and get you but the likelihood of getting zombie vultures on the first blood moon audit is actually fairly fairly small cops and everything don't show up the first one so you should be very very safe even without any walls around and just starting like this is more important because later on as you actually get things done you basically can put down your walls later on and just upgrade something like this so what about all those spikes well you want to start placing them out and the the main thing i like to do it is to just go around and we are actually going to do, keep this one open because I might want to just fill that in later on and just go around. Make one uh, one row around your whole building first and then you sort of go around and start doing a second row because with a couple of, let's say here, with a couple of rows of, uh, of spikes, you'll be killing a bunch of the early game zombies anyway because they don't have a lot of hit points. So something like this, you don't have to be... If, you know super even but they really do help tons by just spiking up your base and i think that something like this is normally going to be enough to survive the first blood moon horde and that's really how simple it is you don't really need that many resources let's see we're going to use these as well we're going to put a little bit of extra around here we're going to leave a little bit of an opening here so we can actually get in ourselves. and going to place down some of these we might we might just uh, save uh, some of the some of the spikes as well and just keep them on us in case we need something for later on but let's get up here again another useful trick to keep in mind is to try to make some of these wooden bars having you know a few of them around is super useful because you basically uh, pick them up and uh, or craft them and then you rotate them using r going to advanced and you rotate them until they sort of something like uh, this and by doing that, you basically can come out and stand here so you have a better visibility around. Make sure you don't fall down into your spikes yourself. It can be a little bit tricky at times, but we're going to do that. Again, it gives me a good visibility here. And I can do the same thing here. Again, just allows me to just go around and shoot things even if they're right by my wall. Otherwise, that can be a little bit tricky. And then sometimes you accidentally fall down and then you're either among the zombies or you're among the spikes, neither of which is a really good place to be. And make sure you repair everything before you enter your, your blood wound hole. You don't want to have broken weapons on anything. You want to make sure everything is in tip shop shape.
And if you have perked up, and I did that in some things, uh, make sure you recraft things the better you can make. So let's not have a quality one club here. Let's have a quality two. That's more important. And some additional things that I would recommend going into when you're doing base building is start looking at intellect here. So I've uh, put one into advanced engineering that allows me to craft the forges, which is really good. I haven't done that here yet because I have one over at the, the trader here. But later on, it allows you to do workbenches, cement mixtures. And that's really, really useful because we want to get to cement we really need cement later on that requires intellect level four which we across a few points in there so that definitely is a day 14 uh, maybe day 21 depending on how things go we're going to get into the Blood Moon Horde in just a few minutes here if you remember I looted some uh, landmines as well so I'm going to place out uh, just a little bit here on this side I'm going to make sure I don't step on them myself something like this and we're going to get up here come on like this and we have our well, let's shift things around a little bit we don't need that one like this we have our where are they coming from okay so they're coming okay that's a wandering hole they're coming from there All right you'll see so they'll be coming up here and you'll see oh one oh, a couple of dead here nice they're running into spikes uh, you should try to Hit them while they're down. Try to get headshots if you even can. It's not as super easy all this, always. But if you can, it's really useful. Special the big ones like Mama there. Try to uh, give her a nice little well, arrow in the face um, to be mean to her. But uh, it really, because they have a lot more hit points than some of the other zombies. And this one he does as well. You saw how he was up on another one. You can also, of course, make sure you are using your blunderbuss. Uh, the ammo for this one is not too bad. Let's see here. Let's shoot them. You're getting... Oh! So my game stage now is... Uh, 15. So it's uh, reasonably high. It's not super high. And it probably should be fairly appropriate for what we have here as well. You see they've taken out the... Out the spikes around there. So we can sort of lead them around a little bit here. You have to get them a little bit closer to these spikes as well. They might take out a little bit on that side, but I don't think we should be having a whole thing falling down. You saw I was over there and they will basically try to move over here as much as they can. You see they're coming here because they want to be closer to me. They really love me. Uh, shoot. Some of them coming in. But generally you saw now that the spikes have been taken out, uh, which is okay conserve your 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 ammunition don't waste too much of it because you probably don't have tons of it and once you're out of ammunition either you have to go down to fight them or you just have to accept that you're gonna get damaged to your base so you might want to just be a little bit careful make sure you hit when you're firing and you probably should be pretty good you see they're going for the spikes here and again this depends on and he's dead which direction they're coming for do headshots and it's even better for you so now they're coming from there which is even better there we go you could go down to uh, try to pick up the the arrows the arrows as well it can be a little bit dangerous though so i wouldn't necessarily recommend it i'd rather just stand up here until i have nothing else and this is why the more spikes you have the less you have to kill by yourself because the thing is with the initial hordes it's unlikely to uh, uh, basically run out of time if you don't shoot them so you want to make sure that you are killing them because at some point you will have to kill them anyway and the faster you do that the less damage you have to your base let's do that and just move around a little bit if you have a blunderbuss try to not miss like i did there you see here they've actually broken through here over there a little bit hard to see, but I did have one zombie that was running around there. And he is... Not quite sure where he is. Oh, there he is. And this is why you want to have a little bit of uh, angle here to shoot him. But see, otherwise he's just, just going to stand there and just uh, deal damage to you. Can still be a little bit tricky. He happens to be in the worst position there. Maybe if I go... Nope. Alright, he appears to be the last one, so we're going to... Uh, how the hell did he get in there? Where did they break? 
I have no idea where this one broke through. Level 8. Oh, here. Alright. Fine. Last one you s Okay, so let's look. You hear the... The sound change? So, let's do... <gasps> Mistakes have been made! Alright, I guess they stepped on two out of the three mines, and I stepped on the last one. Right, so, uh, we survived the Horde Knight sort of... Does that count? You be the judge, you tell me. <laughs> Alright, that was not on purpose. That, that was not on purpose. Okay, so we didn't die from the zombies, we died from our, your, my own mines. <laughs> Oh, that's embarrassing. Oh, that's terrible. That's so embarrassing. I, I should, I should, I should edit that out, but I won't. I, I, I won't. <sighs> so, what I wanted to do, I wanted to pick up my torch. I could actually see and show you a little bit better. That's the only reason I was walking there. Fine. Death by mine. Okay, so now I can pick up some of the these ones. But you see, they took out a little bit. But you see, it's the flagstone ones, the ones that have 500. These ones, they did not take out. So this one again was taken out and a little bit here and that's actually not too bad. Most of the spikes have been taken out. Any more mines? No, I think the mines are all out. But beyond that, we were really, really safe. And of course, just repairing this is actually, well, really, really simple. If you have a few extra blocks on you, I have some. Let me see. Can I? Oh, this is... Okay, this is perfect. I am actually repaired everything because I happen to have five blocks out and I'm actually going to go back into my house here. I didn't have time to put on a proper roof and everything and I figured I'm not going to need it. All I needed was a little bit of these bars. But you saw, even if I made this even smaller, if they took out, let's say, two, four, six blocks or something, of course, damaged a little bit around, you can see that just with a little bit semi-active uh, fighting the zombies, uh, the spikes killing a bunch of them, my, my blunderbuss and my arrows killing a bunch of them as well, and of course, the mines killing some, including myself, you are in a pretty good place, actually, just with a simple base like this and the horde ended at around midnight so it's two hours and as long as you kill them you're good for the rest of it and you can go out and just do your repairs and maybe go and get some more resources and stuff like that because you're not going to get any more blood moon halts at least during this night you might still have some uh, roaming zombies that are around you if you go too far from the base they they will be coming to chase after you but that should be the only danger that you have around now so as a first starter base, as a first evolution of a base build that you can do, this is really what I would start with. Get some flagstone blocks, upgrade some of them to cobblestone blocks just for stability, just in case they start bashing something. Have a little bit of uh, wood walls and maybe a wood ceiling if you can. Ladder up, put a hatch so that the zombies don't accidentally jump up there. Put a bunch of spikes around and then you should be good for day 7 Blood Moon Horde. And if you have problems with this, if you do have problems with surviving even day 7 after watching this, well, let me know what happens in the comment section and maybe people can give you some hints and tricks to how you can actually progress easier and survive. But we're going to be taking this general base concept and we're going to be spending some time next week of just uh, elaborating a little bit, evolving it. Oh, I'm cold. I should have a campfire here. And um, uh, elaborating and evolving it a little bit into something that should handle day 14 because this one might handle day 14 if i have a bunch of uh, more spikes around i definitely need more ammunition but we probably can look at some simple upgrades to make it even more efficient hope you enjoyed that and if you did enjoy this hopefully enough to hit that subscribe button it's free after all and it does help me provide these videos for you but that's it morning is here I did die, but you know, it, that was that was my own stupidity. That was simple because I needed a torch. So it doesn't quite count. Or does it? Good night. Special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the vetted community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.